this video is a little bit about why I switched from Canon to Sony, kind of, and what's in my camera bag. So when I first started photography, I actually was learning on film. I had my brother's old Vividar camera and a 135, I believe it was a possibly a 2.8 lens. Um, it's actually in my camera bag, so I'd have to look the lenses, but anyway, so I went from film to, believe it or not, a little Sony, um, was it a Sony Mavica? I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure, but it was with the little CDs that were in the camera, and the images actually burned onto the CD, and that was actually kind of fun. I kind of liked that format, but, uh, I realized as things progressed, you can't get that high of a resolution image or very many onto those discs, but uh, it was a neat little fun camera. And then I went from the Sony to Nikon. Nikon was my first DSLR digital camera, and I loved Nikon for the longest time. I shot in vivid mode because I loved their vivid color. I did so much with that, and for many years I didn't like Canon. Every Canon that I tried the colors were just not the same. The problem came with my Nikon was the focusing was not the best. And it was getting worse and worse no matter what camera I got. It just didn't seem to have sharp, accurate focus most of the time. So that's when I actually found the, not the Nikon, the Canon D70. And that was the first Canon that I took a test shot with and I actually said, hey, I kind of like these colors. I went from Nikon to Canon at that point, and I shot Canon with the D70 for a few years, and I loved the camera. I um, got a lot of use out of it. Wasn't even thinking about changing brands until I came across a few videos on Sony, and I had a photographer friend that actually had a Sony, and then my final thing was when I was watching, I think it was Jason Lanier, his video on the Sony a6000 and I'm like well if that is true I'm gonna get a 6000 just to try it see how the focus so that's when I ordered my first Sony a6000 and when it came in I just had the kit lens with it and I really wasn't interested in because I shoot beauty and fashion and I know you can get some really good images with a kit lens but I was waiting for my 30 to come in. I ordered a 32.8 Sigma lens and I wanted to test it with that first before I decided if Sony was something I wanted to kind of stick with and then start buying the prime lenses for that. So my first test, I was really impressed. This was before the final upgrade they had to, but the focus system blew me away. I mean, percentage of quality, sharp, vivid images that I was getting compared to what I got with my Canon was dumbfounding. And the quality was really good. So from that point I decided, okay, I'm gonna order an 85 1.8 lens and I'm gonna test it on the 6000 and see if I like that. So that came in and oh my goodness that blew me away. The sharpness, the detail, I would never go back to the 70D at this point. It was just not going to happen. So I knew eventually I might want to get the A7 III, the, the full format camera, but at this point I was getting images so much better than my Canon 70D. I, I decided I'm just going to drop the bucket. I'm going to get another body. I have two A6000s currently. And I got the 85 lens, and I got the 32.8, and I just ordered the 50. So, for now, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to show you what I do have in my camera bag. I still do shoot film as well, and I have two film cameras in my bag. The one I like the most is the, the fully manual pin packs with some Porta or some Trimax black and white. But I'll show you here in a second everything that I do have in my camera bag. But my plan currently is to stick with the two... Sony A6000s, and eventually, maybe by the end of the year, I'm going to invest in the, the A7 III or see if they do come out with a Sony A6000 you know, upgrade that would just be amazing itself. So, Alright, let me get into what is in my bag. 
So this is a little bag that I have on the side, and I'm pretty sure this is my film. Yeah. I'm starting to do a lot more shoots with my old film camera. I got a new strap for it, too. It's pretty cool. Nice, really cute. But this is my Pentax K1000, and it is a 35 millimeter. I don't have my glasses on. 2.8. This is the same lens that I actually started learning my photography with and with film. So it's kind of fun to every shoot, especially when I do beauty headshots, which I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I will shoot a full roll of film just to kind of see what, what I get from that, which is really kind of fun. So this is like my side bag and it has the Pentax, all the batteries it needs, all the film that it needs kind of on this side. My main camera bag. Canon backpack camera bag and I absolutely love this bag even though I'm not shooting Canon anymore. Kind of. I do have one Canon item in my bag but this is so heavy duty durable it survives so much and it's I love this bag. I'm not going to give it up. So extra batteries in these side pockets it appears. My Sony batteries. Ibuprofen for headaches. So we're going to zip this first pocket in here. I always keep an extra, my extra phone, <laughs> business cards, um, any papers or anything that I need. And usually, I think I move my hard drives possibly into here. I always have my backup hard drives. I have two of them. I have this one. So anytime I do a shoot, I always immediately back them up to one of my hard drives. Um, I think I have enough room to get through this year, but I'm going to have to get a couple more of those. Everything, everything is on those for years and years and years. So you have that front pocket where I used to keep those as well, and you still can. So the second pocket of here, where's the cigar? Here we go. In here I keep um, extra small reflectors, extra memory cards, more business cards. It's just kind of an all-around catch-all, some extra cords would go in there. So now your main part of your backpack. Oh my goodness, like all batteries, all extra cords, all adapters are in these pockets and the extra batteries. So, in this front part, I actually still have room to put my film, other film camera in here if I wish. So when I go out, sometimes I'll transfer everything into here so I can carry it all in one bag. I do also have another film camera, just a basic Nikon. So that's kind of funny. Um, Nikon N65 film camera as well. Here's some more extra batteries and film. So, and what I meant about kind of not Canon, well I guess I do not have any more Canon because that's Nikon and my waterproof camera is Nikon as well. This is my underwater camera. I've been testing a few underwater shoots that have been kind of fun and I'm not going to invest into a really good underwater camera or housing. I just kind of got a little Nikon one. So, what else is in my camera bag? Ah, the kit lens that came with the Sony, which I've never used this lens. I actually should try it sometime just to see if it is any good. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you can get a lot of good shots with it. If I had a group or a wedding or something, I might try where there's a lot of people. But for now, body one. This is my main Sony body, and I did get a new camera strap for this one as well. It's really cute. I want to have it engraved on the other side. So, this is my main Sony A6000. This has the 85 uh, 1.8 Sony lens on it all the time. It has my uh, studio trigger to my lithium battery operated light that I can take anywhere with me all the time so that if I ever do want to use it and pop it on, it's right there. Just go into manual, set it, and you're good to go which I shoot manual outdoors too, so pretty much just have to adjust the settings for studio versus that. Alright, 
Sony One. This only has, I think, 6,000 accusations on it so far. Now, the second body, which I go back and forth, or will, between my 50 and my 30, um, I don't have a camera strap on it because the lens is so small and so light that I just, I don't need it. Oh, that's not, I need to buy my lens cap for this one. It's in here somewhere. I'm going to find it. Um, so it's easy for me just to hold this. and I mainly use my second body, which is brand new as well, uh, to get like full body fashion and editorial shots versus... The 85 um, is kind of like more like your portrait, so I do more close-ups with that one. I do full body as well, but all in all, I like the fashion edge. I get a little bit more from this one in some places. So, that's really... I have my cleaners, my extra batteries. I have like six batteries, but I never go for more than two or three in a shoot, and that's usually four to six hours. Um, but that's what's in my camera bag, in my Canon camera bag, which has absolutely no more Canon gear in it. Sorry. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts. That's, initially, I'm not a person who's st stuck with a camera brand. Never have been, probably never will. If there's a feature that I like, and it's performing better, on one camera versus the other, like, in my images, the sharpness quality is so important. In close-up portraits and everything in detail, sharpness and focus is so important. Nowadays, with coloring, even if that's a little off, you can fix that, and it's not a big deal. But when I can get accuracy in a Sony a6000, like 95 to 7 percent of the time. The last shoot I had, I think there was only two images that were out of focus and I knew they were because I took the image without even, like I didn't press and focus and lock it, just took it in. I knew it. Um, but with my Canon, that wasn't, that was not the case. There were, I want to say maybe 85 percent accuracy. I can't tell you for sure, but I do know it was a lot less than the Sony. And for the price point, the lenses were a little bit more pricey for the Sony, but they're going to be worth it, especially if I upgrade and get the full body. I already have all the lenses that I will use on a daily basis, so the next body would be the biggest investment. What? With that being said, that's pretty much why I switched from the D70 or Canon to now Sony, and hoping that I will stay here for quite some time. Thanks guys. Please like and subscribe.